high school and all of her life. And I have to say, what's really incredible about her is that she comes back.
and making everything into a casserole was normal. <laughs> and not having to shovel snow was normal. <laughs> I traveled to Southern, Southern California, where gas being $5 a gallon is normal. And many employees are bilingual due to the Spanish-speaking population. I traveled to the village part of Nigeria, where running water and electricity is not normal. And then I traveled all the way to Tokyo, Japan, for the Olympics this summer, where I walked into the athletes' dining hall, and every volunteer was eager to welcome me and serve me food before I was even able to ask. And when I was leaving the Olympic Stadium alone, disappointed about my seventh place finish, each and every volunteer I walked by made a point to clap for me and bow in appreciation without even knowing how I did. Tokyo's normal is volunteers taking pride in serving and helping others and treating all people with respect and kindness. This consistent traveling opened up my eyes to meeting and appreciating diverse people and their different cultures. It opened up my eyes to the importance of taking the time to understand who people are beyond the surface. We so easily get stuck in our daily routines and the people around us and assume that everyone is like us, that everyone grew up like us and experienced the same things as us. But we all have different experiences that have shaped us into who we are today. And there are reasons why we are the way we are. I say all this because I would have never imagined that I would have ended up here. And I bet most of my teachers would have never imagined this, would have never imagined this either. Growing up, I was extremely quiet, stoic, reserved, and always stuck to myself. I can be stubborn, challenging, and uncompromising. People would always assume things about me from my facial expression, which never really revealed much. She's mean. She's stuck up. She's rude. She's disrespectful. She thinks she's better than everybody else. So let me take a minute now to explain to you what goes on in my head when people are assuming I'm angry. First things first, I like to observe people before jumping into a conversation. I'm not talkative and I'm not quick to throw a fake smile or laugh at a joke that isn't funny for others' comfort. I like to see how you act around one person and how you act around another person and whether you're changing who you are for other people. I like to see how you treat the position how you treat the person in a position of power and how you treat the person who can't do anything for you. I'm hyper aware of my surroundings and it just takes me time to walk up to people and open to others. I am also extremely intentional about who I surround myself with and who I allow to be close to me. So when you see that blank stare on my face, it really has nothing to do with you and more to do with the thoughts I'm processing. On top of all that, I also don't like attention which is an uncomfortable position to be in when everyone makes a big deal out of being a human being and all my other accomplishments. <laughs> so in that place there is a person wishing to be treated as everyone else and blend in. For those that do know me personally, they know that beyond the blank there, I am extremely caring and helpful. I am true to myself in all situations. I am honest, hardworking, and reliable at all times. I expect the best from myself and from others. I'm fun and love to play games, but still super competitive. Not only is that girl with the blank stare a tremendous athlete, I am also a summa cum laude financial planning graduate. I have met with married couples one-on-one -on -one to help educate them on the impact their financial decisions have on their future. I am also the founder of a mentoring program called the Mars Pride that I established to give young girls access to successful role models so they can envision themselves in those same positions. I have written blogs about being a student athlete, caring for natural hair, and lifestyle topics like how to respond to situations that don't go as planned. But society will try to label me as just an athlete, just an Olympian. I am so much more than that. Without the Olympics and without track and field, I still provide so much value to those around me. I have other passions and interests. So now you can all see that there was so much more beyond that black blank stare. In the same way, the students around you are multi-talented and shouldn't be put into a box. We all have so many different talents that can be used to impact the world in unique ways. I can be an Olympian and a writer and a public speaker and a financial planner 
and a mentor all at once. And all of those roles are equally important. I hope that you all will encourage your students to be great at everything they want to do, not just their obvious talents. Don't limit their capabilities by telling they have to choose one path. So many athletes finish their sport and are lost because they have always identified themselves as just one thing. And when that's gone, they feel like they don't even know themselves. Without their sport, they feel like nothing. But that is an untrue belief that society has told athletes for years. We are all multidimensional, and students need to explore every side of their talents, not just the one you believe is most important. The second reason I'm sharing this about myself is because I want you all to make a priority to actually get to know the students around you beyond what you see. They may look a certain way, but look past the assumptions you have made and take the time to really learn who they are and why. Break down that narrative you have created in your mind that's based on your preconceived notions. As staff members, you have a heavy influence on the young individuals you are around every day. And I hope you use that power to uplift, inspire, and empower students. No matter what role you serve, there's always more to learn. I encourage you to not get stuck in your beliefs and ideas based on looks, but instead, stretch yourself to discover the distinct qualities in each person. And ultimately, I hope that this will lead you to look at your students and see that they too can be a two-time Olympian, environment award winner, which is a high of track and field.